happened this game, and then I'll just mention what happened in game one. Okay. I have the box from it. Okay, cool. All right. Ten seconds. Welcome inside Platt Arena. This is one game in the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame Classic, and it is featuring your men's Forster basketball team as they take on Great Lakes Christian College Crusaders. Hello, everybody. I'm Eric Benton. Alongside tonight, Caleb Overfelt. Caleb, welcome in. It's good to be here. We're really excited for our second game and the, uh, the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame Catholic and our second game, a uh, home game for the Huntington University Foresters. And looking in tonight, Caleb, uh, again, this is the second game. The winner of this game moves on to the championship tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the Foresters, uh, in their first three games, have scored 90 points or more. That's pretty impressive. Right. Uh, Foresters have proven that they have a very productive offense, very effective at scoring points in the paint, and uh, we're really excited to see uh, what they can do for the rest of the season. Looking back at that Purdue North Central matchup they had this past Tuesday, Leading's point getter was Shane Merriman, 10 of 13 from the field. And as a team, the Foresters shot 55%. Uh, what do you think that they're going to be doing here in the early minutes to hope that they can get at least 55% again? Well, we saw in the early mi minutes of the Purdue North Central game they, that Huntington got off to a quick start. They were attacking the basket, and we saw a lot of production, especially from Shane Merriman, who had 20 of his points in the first half of the last game. So if we want to kind of repeat the performance that we had a couple weeks ago, I mean, I'm sorry, a few days ago, uh, we're definitely going to want to see the, the production and kind of strike first and uh, get get those points early and never really look back. Again, Shane had 24 points. He only played 26 minutes. That's uh, that's pretty good. Right. <laughs> he knows how to strike hard. He's a very good heads-up player, and he plays very physical game down in the paint. It's very exciting to watch. One thing the Forcers could improve on, I would say, Caleb, is their uh, free throw percentage. Against the Purdue North Central, only 71%. Uh, from the charity stripe, but they got there 28 times. Right. It's always good whenever you're giving yourself opportunities to get points from the free throw line, but we did see a lot of misses there on Tuesday night, and we're hoping to kind of clean up a little bit in that area. And you can guarantee you that Coach Platt worked on that during practice this week. Now, looking at this Great Lakes Christian College team, we pretty much know absolutely nothing about them. There's no stats on the Internet. I tried digging deep into the bowels of the Internet. I couldn't find any. Uh, this team comes out of the NCCAA. That's, I believe, one division lower than the NAIA. Right. The only thing that we do know about them is they are 0-2. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean that the Foresters should underestimate them, since you're right. We do not know that much about how they've played so far this season. Exactly. And uh, it looks like they may have some height to match up with the Foresters, specifically number 23 for Great Lakes, and that's Earl Boyd. He's only a sophomore, six foot seven, 205 pounds out of Detroit, Michigan. I imagine he'll be going up uh, with Shane Merriman there in the low blocks. Right. And in that area, we might be missing Alec Peterson, who, again, will not be playing tonight, our 6'10 uh, junior center. And we're going to hope to have him back, hopefully, in a few games. But for the meantime, we're going to have to make do without him. But I have every confidence in the ability of Shane Merriman to play down in the low post. And Shane Merriman, he's only 6'5", but he plays like he's about 6'8", 6'9". He really loves to use that body to his advantage. He does. He's very aggressive in the paint, makes a lot of good heads-up plays. And you know he can use the glass like nobody I've ever seen. Not to mention, he's probably the best I've seen at absorbing contact. I and mean, when you got 12 or two bodies on him, sometimes he'll break that double team. In last uh, game against Purdue North Central, we saw him break a triple team and go right to the hole. Right. If you're going to outmatch Shane Merriman, you got to be more physical than him, and I don't see very many people who are <laughs> capable of doing that. Now, of course, the Forcers come in 3-0. and uh, Again, scoring 95, 92, and then 90 uh, against Purdue North Central. Uh, we've seen some good fast break offense. We've seen some good half court offense. What do you think uh, is going to be the better option here against this Great Lakes team? Well, I think that the Foresters will probably just see what they can do and see whatever pace that they can control that will cause uh, the Crusaders to be a little bit off balance. If, they, if that means they need to run the floor and get some fast break points, then I'm sure we'll start to see them do that. We're more than capable of doing that with our three-guard offense, of course, with Alec Peterson being out. So uh, that will definitely be a possibility, but the four stats have shown they can play a really good half-court offense, especially with their two forwards, TJ Short and Shane Merriman. And again, you mentioned earlier, Forrester's got off to a quick start against PNC, getting up 11-0. Uh, 
there in the early opening minutes, and hopefully we can see a repeat of that again. Right, and when that happened, really Huntington never looked back. There was a point in the game where it was tied, but Purdue North Central never was able to take the lead in that game. So all the Forrester fans here tonight would like to see a repeat performance of Tuesday night. And again, the winner of this game goes on to play IU East. The winner of the earlier game tonight uh, against Judson College. And they won that one 99-88. So IU East and the Red Wolves will be able to go on and play tomorrow at 3 p.m. And the consolation game where Judson will play will be at 1 p.m. And that's back here inside Platt Arena. So, again, we've looked at some of the key players. Uh, now, Caleb, if you could say someone else than Shane Merriman, who's going to be the guy that has to be that X factor? Well, you're definitely going to want to look to your returners, Tyler Alt and uh, Ryan Baster and TJ Short. All those players, really good leaders uh, on the court and are capable of big production. Somebody we haven't mentioned yet are our three, I, I call them the trifecta of Columbia City freshmen. <laughs> we saw some pretty impressive performances from all three of those players. And of course, I'm referring to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that will be uh, Drew Benedict, Derek Heinen, and Daniel Wool. Yeah, those three guys, when they came off the bench, and Derek Heinen starting, and uh, aside from him, those two guys coming off the bench have been really, really impressive. We saw Daniel Wall electrify the crowd with a dunk against PNC. Right, very high-energy player, Daniel Wall. Statistically, maybe he didn't perform as well as he would have liked, but he made a couple really high-effort plays that the crowd really loved and really kind of got the forcers back on track when they were slumping. And not to mention, he also pulled down six boards. That's going to be good when he has to come in for Shane Merriman. Right, I love to see a player who plays with that kind of effort, and he's definitely a fun guy, and he's getting, we're going to definitely be keeping an eye on him tonight. So we're closing in on a minute before we begin the game. We're going to go ahead and take a break after the national anthem and prayer here on uh, Forster Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM.
Welcome back inside Platte Arena. I'm Eric Mann alongside Caleb Overfelt, and we're ready for the Foresters versus the Crusaders. And right now we're about to get our starting lineups out on the floor. And these are, these are probable. We'll go ahead and start off with Great Lakes Christian. They'll have uh, at guard number one, Perry Vaden, along with number four, Garrett Abner. Number 10, Troy Aubrey joins them at guard. Three guards going for the Crusaders. And then they too will go with two forwards. And number 11, Keenan Pride. And number 32, Taylor Richards. And Caleb, why don't you go ahead and lead us into the Foresters? And as we said, Huntington will be going with a three guard offense. Uh, junior Ryan Baster will be start starting, along with junior Tyler Alt. Derek Heinen, the lone starting freshman. TJ Short will be playing forward as a senior, and Shane Merriman also playing forward is also a senior. Again, Caleb, we've seen a lot of production out of the starting core, but again, we can't forget those guys off the bench that have produced, and specifically, I would say Daniel Wall has really stuck out to me as the crowd gets to their feet. Right, we saw him work really hard and have a lot of high effort plays in last Tuesday's game, and I'm sure he'll be rewarded for that and maybe get a little bit more playing time tonight, so we'll definitely be looking for that. And Derek Heinen, a 6'3 guard out of uh, that trio of Col out of Columbia City. And again, Coach Platt really going after some very nice players. Right. They definitely like him there in Columbia City. And we've seen some great production out of Derek Heinen. He had eight assists in Tuesday's game against Purdue North Central. Very unselfish player. Plays his role as a point guard very well. Again, Drew Benedict. He came off the bench for the Forces, only 15 minutes, but two really clutch threes. Right, and right back to back two, and the crowd absolutely loves him. And look at that, there you get a good look at the student section here inside Platte Arena, and they are going nuts here in the arena. Been a lot of effort to fill the student section up, and I, we could definitely, in our first two home games, have seen quite a substantial student section compared to what we've seen in uh, previous years. Yeah, I mean, we've got fans all the way up near the rafters in the final row up there, Caleb. Right, and they've even been moved to a bigger section, so it's deceptively, <laughs> there's a lot of people there. Good game, guys. Both guys, both teams now taking the floor. Looks like we'll have TJ Short willing to jump here. Right, and on Tuesday we did see him. You know, it's questionable with uh, with the absence of Alec Peterson, who would be tipping the ball, but he won the tip in Tuesday's game, so I figured they're going to go back to him again. And jumping for Great Lakes will be number 32, Taylor Richards. Junior center, but he's only 6'4", Caleb. You don't really see too many very small centers like that. Right, and that'll work to Huntington's advantage as we're missing our 6'10 center as well. <laughs> Fans are packed in tight here inside Plateria. The game is about to begin. There's a tip, and it will go to the Foresters. Merriman has got it. Derek Heinen will go ahead and run the point here for the Foresters. The Great Lakes uh, Crusaders looks like they're coming out in a 2-3 zone. Quick pull-up three for TJ Short. No good. Rebound goes to Brandon Jones, number three. And now Jones will run the point, crosses the timeline. He's met by Tyler Alt. Now works it over the near side in Vickers, number 22. Now they go back to Jones. Now work it to Vaden. Vaden defended by Heinen. Now they go to the big man Richards. Richards defended by Merriman. Back outside to the perimeter go the Crusaders. Working with 10 on the shot clock. Back inside, Richards loses the ball, stripped away by Ryan Baster, and it's TJ Short coming up with it. Here go the Foresters. Heinen in the corner, Tyler Alt. Moving it around, Baster for three, yes! This is the exact kind of play that we expect from Ryan Baster. Getting a really good heads up steal and getting the ball down the court and nailing a three pointer. That's what I like to see to start off the game. And after only coming away with four points against Purdue North Central, that's got to be a great start in the mind of Ryan Baster. Right. We know he's capable of so much more than he did on Tuesday, and I like seeing it early in this game. Richards at the high post will dish it off now to Jones. Jones has a screen stolen by the big guy, Shane Merriman. Bounce pass to Heinen. Back to Merriman. Got it blocked from behind. Can't Even see who got a piece blocked, of that. It was a good half-court play there. Looks like it was Vaden who may have gotten a piece, and he's coming back very, very slowly, but he looks like he's fine. There you see him crossing the timeline, and he is good to go. As they work it around to Jones. Jones now works it to 11. That is Keenan Pride. Now they'll go around the perimeter one more time. Looking to go inside to Richards, and said it's back to Jones, top of the key. Jones with the screen. Nice backdoor feed. And no, they wave it off, it is a charge. And guess who? It's the freshman, Derek Heinen, taking the, Very taking the charge. Very good heads up play by Heinen. He knew he was outsized down in the paint, but he took it like a man, took a charge. Forrester basketball. Not to mention, 
Caleb, he stayed outside of that restricted area. Very smart move. It's always great when you can see a freshman play that smart. In a 2-3 zone here for the Crusaders. Back to the top with Heinen, a screen. Now going inside to short, back out, alt for three. It is good. And if we can get these shots early, like I said, this is a very similar start to what we saw on Tuesday. 6-0, Huntington over Great Lakes Christian. Under 17.40 to go in the first half. And what a start. Here's a quick pull and shoot. That one rattles in off the back iron. That was 22, Michael Vickers, a senior guard out of Rochester Hills, Michigan. And now here comes some full court pressure, but the Foresters break it on across the timeline. Alt swings it to Heinen on the far wing. Working with the score now, 6-2. Working it now, Baster, quick passing here from the Foresters. Now it's short, in the lane to Merriman. Puts it up and in. You mentioned in the pregame Merriman's ability to body up against two or three people, and that was a great example of how he does that again. Possibly could have been a foul, but no less. Still two points for Shane Merriman. It's now 8-2, under 17 minutes to go first half. Ball working around the perimeter again as Vaden goes inside. Richards, turnaround jumper high off the glass, and he uses the window. And that shot was relatively uncontested. We'd like to see some hands get up there. Here's Alt. In the full court pressure coming from Great Lakes. Heinen breaking it himself, goes inside. Merriman misses the layup. Merriman may be looking for a foul there as he rushes back. Here come the Crusaders. Back inside, Richards, another turnaround jumper, no good. Merriman the rebound, and the Foresters will try and slow it down. Here comes Heinen. Heinen may not be thinking of slowing down as he's quickly on the other end. Works it to Baster. Now back outside, Heinen. Quick passes around the perimeter. Back and forth between Baster and Heinen. Here's the kick to Alt. Alt will move back to the right, center it with Short. Now to Baster. And a reach-in foul there, it looks like, as Baster was trying to cut to the hoop. That'll go against number 11, Keenan Pride. As your score is 8-4 here in the early going. Saw the Forsters slow it down a little bit. It looks like they're trying to control the pace of the game and against the efforts of the full court press. Deep inbound goes to Heinen, top of the key. Now Heinen will look to make something happen. Goes over to Short. Now it's at the elbow with Merriman. Back to Heinen. Derek looking to break a double team. Tries to get it back to Baser, but it's taken away. Pride going all the way himself. Misses the layup. I think Alt may have been a little bit of a distraction there. And Pride could not hit the jumper. Here alone in the corner. It's Short for three in and out. No good. Again, we see it's a very fast-paced game to start off. Seems to be working Huntington's advantage right now, but we'll see how it plays out. Score remains 8-4, 15-25 and counting in the first half. As Alt bodies up against Jones. Here's a deep three. That one rattles in. And just like that, it's a one-point deficit for Great Lakes. Here's Alt quickly going up to short. And now it's back with Tyler Alt. Alt crosses the timeline, and he's good to go. Now dishes off to Baster, and he'll call out the play. Alt. Goes to the elbow with Merriman, back outside. Baster juggled it a little bit, had an open look, but could not get it away. Forsters continue to work it around the perimeter. Key man being Heinen. Now Baster spots up, he'll go cross court. Alt for three, no good. Tipped up and in by Merriman, wow! It's a good heads up play. It knew exactly where it was going, boxed out his man, and tipped the ball in. Typical Shane Merriman. Caleb, are you surprised we're seeing so many threes taken here in the early going by right. the Foresters? The Foresters seem to be struggling to get the ball inside to the paint on their offense. They keep shuffling it around, but it is working out as of right now. Vaden with the ball. Now we're working to the big man, Richards. And we see Daniel Wool about to check in. Here it goes inside. Vaden all alone. Forster defense got shuffled around. It's now 10-9. As the Forcers work it across the timeline. Heinen now with it, top of the key. Against that 2 3 zone. Looks back for the play from Coach Ty Platt. Heinen works it to Baster. Thought about the three, does not take it. Works it to Heinen. Alt left alone for three. In and out, no good. Again, we see a little bit more of just passing the ball around the perimeter to get an open shot. Like to see the ball get into the paint. That's where Huntington really shines. Ball working with Vickers. Back out near the timeline, he'll work it to Vaden. Vaden guarded by Heinen. Defense, defense. Now back to Vickers. Vickers 
telling his players to move around as the defense is pretty tight here from Huntington. Vickers picks up his dribble, bounce pass to Richards. Richards has to stop, kicks it back out. A three ball, no good. And an over the back will be called against Taylor Richards, number 32. And looks like we're going to have some substitutions. We'll see number 34, Kyle Pippinger, number one, Drew Benedict, and also Daniel Wall, as you mentioned, Caleb. He's going to check in. And now this is the media timeout, 13-17 to play here in the first half. 10-9 your score, Foresters with the lead on Forrester Sports Live and 105.5 Fuse FM. Back inside Platte Arena, 10-9 your score as we hit our first media timeout at 13-17. And the Forsters working with a 10-9 lead over the Great Lakes Christian Crusaders. It will be Forster ball. And the inbound will go to Drew Benedict. He gives it right back to his fellow freshman, Derek Heinen. And there are four freshmen on the floor right now for HU. Ball, man working with the ball is Wall. Back out to Heinen, now Benedict. Again, the quick passing here for the Foresters. Here's a pass inside. What a move by Merriman, got, but got it blocked. It was Vaden getting the block, and now he's quickly on the other end for GLCC. Seen a couple blocks from Vaden tonight. We got to watch out for him on the inside. Also had a sub here for the Great Lakes. Number 30, David Parks has checked in, and I believe he came in for Richards, number 32. Ball worked around. Here's 42. That's James Hughes, a freshman guard, going up against Heinen. Now it's back outside with Vickers. Six on the shot clock. Hughes back outside with two. You got to put it up, and he did not. Shot clock violation. Not quite sure if he was aware of how little time he had left, but that worked out for the Forrester advantage. It was Vaden, the man who had the ball last. And for a junior like that, you don't really expect that many mistakes out of right, You want to see a little bit more conscientiousness about the clock there. Score still 10-9. Forsters lead by a single point. And here is Heinen. Heinen will go to Daniel Wall. Now quickly back to the freshman guard. Heinen goes inside. Wall dishes it to Merriman off the glass. Good work. Great pass underneath by Daniel Wall. Very heads-up play to find the upperclassman. Again, running the point now will be Vickers, number 22 for Great Lakes. He'll work it off to Hughes. Hughes now to Vaden. Now working it to 11. That is Pride. Pride going inside. Knocked loose by Heinen, but back to Pride. Pride guarded tough there by Daniel Wall. Back this defense we would definitely expect by him. Moving his feet, a lot of effort. Here we go. The shot clock down to six. Three ball put up. That one rattles in and out. No good. Merriman, an easy board. Forsters quickly moving it the other way with Benedict. Benedict will go to the big man wall. Now back outside in the perimeter. A deep three, no good. Ball tipped up. Still loose, and Pippinger comes up with it. Ball works with Heinen. Pippinger, he's left alone. That one's too strong, and a push in the back. It looks like they'll get Merriman. TJ Short will now check back in. Looks like they're going to give Shane Merriman a break. Surprisingly, Caleb, that's only the first team foul for the Foresters this deep into the first half. That's got to be pretty good. They're playing good, heads up, clean, tough man defense. I love watching it. So now TJ Short on the floor. He will guard number 30, David Parks. Ball now with Vickers. He'll go across court with Hughes. Hughes defended by Pippinger. And a, an offensive foul going the other way. It looks like it's going to go against Vaden. Looks like he completely ran over either Daniel Wall or Derek Heinen. And 
I believe that was well again drawing a little bit of attention away from the ball. It's like what I like to see out of a freshman. Bandit gets it in easily to Heinen. Heinen going to take his time now in this one. Looks like they're content with running the half court. Wall, bounce pass back to Heinen. Now they'll work it to Benedict. Going inside. Oh, Whoa! Nice. An alley-oop. None other than Danny Wall comes in. His head was above the rim. He came up so high. And the roof has come off of Platte Arena. Holy smokes. I tell you what, he was a favorite for this crowd before this, but now I think everybody <laughs> loves him. I think we should give him the keys to the city after that big slam. It's two games in a row. We've seen a giant play by Danny Wool. Here comes Great Lakes the other way. Ball knocked loose, and it's and, Wall again. Oh, what a great pass. TJ Short, oh, he throws oh, it oh. down. Timeout, Great Lakes, and Wall and Short are fired up. Not only did Daniel Wall get an excellent steal there, but he whipped the pass right around in mid-stride to TJ Short. A quick timeout taken by Great Lakes. We'll stay with you on this. 16-9, your score, 10-12 to play. Man, this place has gone crazy. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. There you can take a look at the student section. And, man, they've got something to cheer about here. If Daniel Wall continues to do this, uh, there's no doubt he'll be a, at least a Hall of Famer for dunks, if anything. Right. If anybody was worried about us talking to him too much in the pregame, obviously we didn't do him enough justice. <laughs> that was a 30-second timeout taken by Great Lakes. They now have five remaining. First one actually taken by either side. We haven't had really too many stoppages in play here, Caleb. Right. We've only been here for a few minutes, and already the first half is almost halfway done. 16-9 as Great Lakes works it up with number three, Brandon Jones. He, too, a freshman out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now he'll go to his fellow freshman in Hughes. Hughes working it back to Vaden. Faden now back to Hughes. Hughes at the free throw line. Looked like he got away with a push. Puts it up and drains it. And that's what Coach Blatch is talking about. You see him in the bottom of your screen. Right. He Looks like he was leading with the forearm a little bit. He did lead with his arm, and it did knock over uh, Derek Heinen, but sometimes you don't get those. Ball across the timeline now, and the Forcers will set up in their half-court offense. Ball worked to Benedict. He's going to take a deep three. No good. And Faden the rebound. Benedict looks to be trying to find his rhythm tonight, but so far hasn't found it. But there's He's still a lot of basketball. He's taking a pretty deep here, Caleb. That's he well beyond the college three-point line. He must be pretty confident about his range. Ball worked inside. Parks dishes to Vaden. Thou knocked loose, and it's Wall coming up with it. A lot of contact down there in the lane. Right. It looked to be clean, but again, physical play down low. Benedict dished out, and now they'll work it back to Heinen. Plenty of time on the shot clock, just under 20. Ball worked inside. Whoa, the reverse layup. We see almost an opposite of what we saw in the fast break earlier. We got a really good pass from TJ Short down to Wall, who gets an easy layup. And that I think that says a lot about TJ Short. He trusts that freshman Wall enough to go ahead and give him a nice look inside. Well, Wall's definitely earned that trust from his fellow teammates. Now it's Hughes. Hughes working here on the near wing against Piffinger. Still some very nice tough defense and over the back. And our Foresters are playing tenaciously close, even 10 feet outside of the arc. Couple of subs coming in, both Baster and Alt check back in, and Derek Heinen will take his first rest, along with Drew Benedict. He'll head back. 18-11 year score, 8.28 to go first half. Foresters with the lead, and man, this crowd is electrified. Right, almost the entire student section up on their feet. They are excited about what they are seeing in front and of them And of course, today. in among that student section is our president, Dr. Sherilyn Emberton. She is right in it, too. She seems to have an enthusiasm for Forrester basketball, and at right now, nobody can blame her. Ball worked inside. Now back outside. Pippinger, nice ball fake. He'll take it to the hole. Oh! Oh, count that one and the foul. That one found its way to the bottom of the basket after hitting the glass and after he took contact. What a great shot. Pippinger heads to the line. We'll see who the foul was on there. Goes against 30. That is Parks. Shane Merriman will check back in for Daniel Wall, and he will get a round of applause as he heads back to the bench. High fives all around from the coaches and his teammates. We know that's not the last we're going to be seeing of him tonight, that's for sure. Pippinger adds the end one, and 
Just like that, the Foresters out to a 10-point lead, 21-11. Hit the eight minute mark. Oh, sorry, go ahead there, Caleb. That's all right. We talked about pace at the beginning of the game, and the Forcers are definitely controlling this slow paced game. Ball work to Hughes. Now he will go to Jones. A blocking foul down there in the paint as it was dished out. That'll go against Ryan Baster, number four. Good decision there, I would say, to drive and kick on that. And it is another media timeout, 7.50 to go. And your Huntington Foresters lead at 21-11 over the Great Lakes Christian College Crusaders. And that's a mouthful, Caleb. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but we got it. <laughs> it really is. We're going to have to work on our abbreviations throughout we're, the night. We're back after this on Forster Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM. Back inside Plan Arena, the second game of the evening in the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame Classic. Your Foresters lead it over Great Lakes Christian, 21-11. With 7.50 to go here in the first half, it's Great Lakes Christian ball. After a foul committed by Ryan Baster, he's just trying to take a charge. Was unsuccessful. The inbound will go to 22 Vickers. Pippinger will guard him. Now it looks like the Foresters may have transitioned a little bit, Caleb, into a 2-3 zone. Right. We saw them start off with that man defense, and it's working well. Looks like they're going to try to give themselves a rest a little bit and switch into a zone. All Vaden got was a backboard on that shot, an easy board for the Foresters, and here comes Baster. He's going to quickly pull up and shoot, and he makes it. It's a three ball. Great Lakes made the mistake of leaving him wide open at the top, and that's not going to work very well for them. Now a 13-point lead, 24-11. 7.15 to go first half. There's Baster right out on Vickers. Ball work to Vaden, and now Jones. Jones almost loses it, gets it right back. He'll drive in, now back outside. Here's a three ball from Pride. No good, rebound short. And here come the Foresters again, quickly down the other way. Pippinger, pump fake, spins and kicks it back out. Working it with Baster, top of the key. Now with Alt. Alt to Short. Short working in the low block. Bodies up. Nice move inside by Merriman, and he's fouled. And again, we see Baster running the point here. Now he starts off as a two guard, but we know from last season he's very capable of running as a point guard as well. Saw Baster last year also play through a bit of an ankle injury throughout the season, and uh, that just shows a little bit of his toughness for the young junior. Right, he's very committed to this team, and he's a great leader. Shane Merriman at the line. First trip to the line tonight for the big, big man. So far from the charity stripe as he adds the first one. Coming into the tonight, Caleb's 20 of 26, just under 77% from the charity strike. Right, and that's a little bit of a skewed percentage as he had kind of a bad game on Tuesday night. So let's look to see him hit maybe get a little bit higher percentage from the foul line today. Merriman again working for his second free throw. It is up and good. Two for two for Shane Merriman. And we saw Calvin Miller check in for the Foresters. Here comes Vickers. Looks like Vickers is now taking over the point guard position. And now he'll work it alongside over to Jones. Jones guarded tightly by Alt. And now Jones looking to drive in, kicks it out. Here's Vaden, loses the ball, but a foul underneath. Well, that Very looks late pretty call clean there. to me there. Looked like you got all ball on that one, but they're going to get him for a foul. They're going to get that one against Tyler Alt, number 10. Get a bit of a light whistle there. It will be taken from underneath the basket. And you score 26-11 after those two free throws from Shane Merriman. Forcer's not even playing the inbounder, but that will cost him or not. Went off of Merriman's behind, but the layup was missed by the inbounder. Right. Very lucky there for the Foresters. Nobody was guarding the inbounder, and he was able to get the ball in, but he just choked on that layup. Alt left alone for three, and it rattles home. 
29-11, an 18-point lead now. Vickers, gotta be thinking, what can we do to do something against this Forster defense? Now it's with Faden, top of the key, short defending. Now they work it to Jones. Jones switched off by Miller, and he shoots an air ball, rebounded by Short. Here they come quickly again are the Foresters. Short stops, gives it off to Miller. He'll shot fake, and now it's worked around the perimeter with Alt. Down to the low blocks, Merriman puts it up, and he's fouled again. <laughs> We're going to get Perry Vaden, number one, with that. And the Junior Forest out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Foresters are taking advantage of their many three-point opportunities they're taking. There's, they have a lot of head fakes over at the top of the key, trying to fake them in and see if they can get a clear shot to the lane. That seems, Caleb, to have shot the Crusaders out of that zone, and they're really getting penetration now. Right. First free throw. Hits every part of the rim and goes in. Here comes Daniel Wall checking in for TJ Short. And the crowd's very excited to see him back in the game. Merriman with one more. This would take it out, Caleb, to a 20-point lead. And we're still a decent way through the first half. We're not even close to halftime yet. That one rattles in and out. No good. Who are they going to get the foul on here? That'll go against number 30. That is Parks. And we see and Daniel, puts Wall. Daniel Wall at the line. Right, coming in hard for that rebound. He was able to tip it, and it looks like he drew a foul as well. He'll be shooting the one in bonus, I believe. First one on the way for Wall. That one too strong. But Merriman comes up with the rebound. Puts it up himself and adds again. Nice tip by Tyler Alt to get it to Shane to get him in scoring position. 32-11. 525 to go here in the first half. A great start here for the Foresters inside Platt Arena. That's the ball with Hughes now. Hughes goes to Vaden. Now we'll go cross court. That one to no one in particular. And Ryan Baser takes it away. Here is Miller. Back outside with Alt. Round to Baser and now with Wall. Wall looking to drive. Almost loses it. Has to back it out. Gives it to Shane. Merriman underneath, too strong off the glass and tipped around. It's Parks with the loose ball. And Merriman's frustrated with himself for that one. You don't see him miss those kind of shots very often. A little too high off the glass on that shot. But again, it's a 32-11 lead with under five minutes to play in the first half. Ball worked to Vaden. Now back to Hughes. Alt defends. And they'll work it around the perimeter one more time. Closing it on 10 on the shot clock. Vickers. Tries to drive, spin move in the lane, puts it up. That one no good, and that one's out of bounds. That's, I believe, two or three straight air balls for the Crusaders. It looks like they've earned the air ball chant from the Huntington University student section. Derek Heinen will check back in. He'll come on for Ryan Baster. And Huntington's defense looks excellent tonight. They've got a really nasty man, and they've even switched into the zone a few times. Also checking in, number 22, Brody Crow for the Foresters. Crow. Freshman out of Jasonville, Indiana, attending Shackenback High School. He's getting a little bit of action here late in the first half. Here is Wall going up against Parks. And he traveled before the shot. On a contact, though, so that could be argued, but it looked like he picked up the pivot foot first. Ball goes back to the Crusaders, 32-11 remaining. Or 32-11 your score, I should say. Four minutes to play in first half. Vickers. Works it over to Hughes. Hughes defended by Crow. Hughes goes between the legs. Now he'll drive into the paint, dish it out. A long two put up. No good again. Another air ball. Here comes Wall. Oh, my. He almost got the roll into the hoop, but he draws the foul. You got to love the drive, and that one almost rolled in, but he'll still be able to shoot two on that Even one. Even the crowd was ooing and eyeing on that shot. They thought Daniel Wall would have added another amazing highlight real play. Well, the night's still young, Eric. <laughs> Looks like number 40, Kai Fode, looking to check in after this first free throw. Wall at the line, puts it up. That one a little too strong and no good. Fode going to come in for Shane Merriman. Also number three, Brandon Jones checking back on for the Crusaders. He comes on for Keenan Pride, number 11. And it looks like Huntington's taking advantage of their big lead, trying to let some of their other players, their non-starters, come in off the bench. 
Wall second free throw. That one in and out no good. So now Wall, I believe, 0 for 3 from the charity strike. Maybe 0 for 4 also as well. Jones works it to Vickers. Vickers defended by the freshman Heinen. Now they work it inside. Steal by Wall. Wall will now back it out and give it to Heinen. They'll work it out near the timeline. Now it looks like the Crusaders have gone back to that zone. Working it around. Miller for three. Yes! Calvin Miller! And after a bit of a drought, the Forcers are able to knock down another triple. Looking good, and the crowd's into this again. Miller from right here in Huntington, Indiana, attending nearby Huntington North High School, and he's making the hometown crowd proud here. Hughes off to Vickers. Heinen defending, and in the crowd, really putting it back to Vickers with those air balls. Here's Vaden for two. Maybe a deep three, but still no good. Heinen working the fast break, kicks to Crow for three. No good. Miller the rebound and the putback. And he came in for that rebound completely uncontested, and the same thing when he shot. None of the Great Lakes players were able to get their hands up. And this one is starting to get ugly. 37-11. Under two and a half to play. Steal again by the big man, Wall. Forsters are making Great Lakes pay for every mistake on defense. That one knocked up and out of bounds. Looks like it went off Parks, number 30. Now Vickers will check out for number five, Lantonio Clark. Latino Clark, excuse me. Actually, they have changed the call. It said it went off of Wall there. Ball working with Jones, he'll cross the timeline, and he too getting an air ball chant. Back outside with Hughes, defended by Crow. And back out to Vaden. <laughs> working it to Jones, and he's still getting it from the crowd. Here's a shot, put up a three, and that one is off the glass and in well, the for number five, Clark. The Crusaders definitely needed that one. That's the first time they've seen a shot go through the hole in a long time. 37-14 now. Under two minutes to play. Forster's content to work it around the perimeter right now. And they'll go to Wall. Going cross court to Miller. Miller an up fake. Goes cross court again. Crow catch and shoot for three. No good. Fode the rebound. And he gets fouled. Does not go. But Fode will be at the line for two free throws. Well, we're seeing all the confidence in the world coming off the Forrester bench here. Everybody's doing their best, taking a lot of good shots. Fode, a sophomore transfer attending Canterbury High School, but from right here in Huntington, Indiana. 6'4", 210 pounds. He has seen action in every game now this season, coming off the bench. And it's curious to note that we don't have any returning players from last year on the floor right now. <laughs> All a bunch of new guys, and they're doing excellent tonight. That is indeed correct. Working with four freshmen and a sophomore transfer. This is looking very, very good here for the Foresters. Couple of subs in for Great Lakes. You have number 24, Nathan Shelton. All with 44, J.J. Turner. And now Drew Benedict will head onto the floor for Derek Heinen. Both free throws good from Fode. So he's now on the board. And here comes Great Lakes down 25 with under a minute and a half to play. Jones will work it now to Clark. Clark at the high post. Works it to Parks. Parks defended by Fode. Now back out to Jones. Jones looking to drive in. Blocking foul underneath. Looks like they may get Brody Crow with the foul, and it will be him. Also, Cable, okay, want to mention about Fode. He played soccer this year as well. Yeah, it's always great to see some well-rounded athletes, and you know this guy is just as athletic as they come. Got to think with soccer, that endurance has got to be up there for, for, for Fode. First free throw on the way. High off the back iron and no good. And a very distracting scream <laughs> coming from the Forrester student section. That one scared me. That one took me by surprise for sure. Second free throw put up by Jones, and that one is good. 39-15 with a buck 13 to go in the half. Now Benedict will run the point in place of Derek Heinen. He'll work it over to Miller. Now back to Benedict. And it to Crow. Again, the Forcers content to work it around the perimeter. Crow. And a foul underneath as Crow was heading to the basket. 
like you mentioned, the Foresters are working the perimeter, not really putting a whole lot of effort on getting inside, but you know if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's <laughs> definitely working tonight. Fouls against Nathan Shelton, the sophomore out of Greenfield, Indiana. And that'll put Brody Crow at the line for two free throws as the Crusaders are in the double bonus. Crow adds the first. You now your score 40 to 15. I'm, I don't know if I have seen a better played defensive half here for the Foresters in my four years of being here, Caleb. Well, like I said, they're making Great Lakes pay for every mistake that they're making on offense. Second free throw good as well from the freshman Crow. It's now 41-15. Here comes Jones bringing it up. Met by Pippinger who has checked in. Ball worked around now. Clark working to Turner. And now back to Jones. Jones to Clark. He'll put up a three. That one took a nice bounce but did not fall. And Crow gets the rebound with 35 seconds to play. The ball going out of bounds. Drew Benedict not cutting like Crow possibly thought he was right, going looks like to. Looks like a little bit of quarterback receiver miscommunication there. 33.6 to play now. Still 41-15. Foresters out to a 26-point lead. Shot clock was now turned off. Inbound will go to Jones. And if you're the Crusaders here, Caleb, what do you think you do? Do you hold for the last shot just to try and get something right going into the locker room? Well, at this point, they really don't have much to lose. I think they're trying to get one good play in and maybe get some points go on the board going into halftime. Jones, the crossover, works it to Clark. Good switch by Benedict. And he's going to get called for the foul with 12.7 to play. 15 foul the half for the Forsters, only the first against Benedict. So far, Caleb, a pretty clean half as far as fouls. Right, especially for the Forsters, only five. Inbound to Clark, under 10 seconds to play. Jones takes a shot, deep two, no good, rebound Crow, two seconds. Benedict, catch and shoot. Oh, no good, it looked on line, but a little wide left. And that will take us to halftime. Man, Caleb, what a half. 41 to 15. Absolutely nothing going wrong for the Foresters early in this game. Unbelievable. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back to bring you some uh, halftime stats, along with what can we expect in half number two. I'm pretty sure we'll be looking for some Forester success here in half two as well. Here we are at the half, 41-15, Foresters over the Crusaders here on Forester Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM.
Back inside Platt Arena. Nine minutes until we're back underway. But the Foresters out to a 41-15 lead over the Great Lakes Christian College Crusaders. I'm Eric Banton alongside Caleb Overfelt. Now let's take a look here at the halftime stats, Caleb. Go ahead and tell us how the Crusaders have been basically struggling all half. Well, the thing that sticks out to me most right now is field goal percentage. Huntington hitting their usual around 50%. But unfortunately, Great Lakes has only hit 30% of their shots, and they haven't had very many attempts in the first place. So if I'm their coach right now, I'm definitely wanting them to get better looks and get some of those in the basket. Another thing you got to look at is the rebounding. The Foresters doubling the Crusaders at 20 to 10, and then also steals 6 to 1 in favor of the Foresters and the turnovers. It's been pretty much a disaster for the Crusaders. 11 turnovers in the first half compared to only four for the Foresters. Right. The Foresters' defense right now is a force to be reckoned with. They're playing a really tough man, playing really up close to these Great Lakes players, even at the top of the key, forcing a lot of turnovers and making them take bad shots. Looking at some individual scores. All scorers are led by Shane Merriman with 11 points, go along with five rebounds as well. And then you have Ryan Baster and Tyler Alt both with six. And then Calvin Miller off the bench, kind of a surprise. He's gone for five points, two, two from the field. Right. We see this. the scoring is definitely very spread out among the Forester. We saw a lot of players get some time, and we saw Merriman get 11 points, with, and he was only on the court for 13 minutes. <laughs> also, you got to look at Daniel Wall, two of two from the field. And not to mention, he came up with not just three steals, he's got two assists also. But a monster dunk, no yep, less. Right. The stats sometimes don't show the kind of energy that he brings. And that alley-oop is something that nobody here is going to forget anytime soon. And there's, of course, uh, you had Wall. But you also got to remember, TJ Short threw down a pretty nice one-hander also. Oh, yeah. Right after that to really get the <laughs> crowd sparked and really to get this momentum started by the Foresters. Surprisingly, TJ only with two points. Why do you think that is? Well, he's been very unselfish with the ball. He's got four assists leading all players here tonight. So he's 
not not taking the shots that even though he might be able to hit, but he's being unselfish and getting good opportunities for his teammates to get inside and score. And looking at Great Lakes Christian, they're letting scoring by Michael Vickers with five points. Then you go to Latino Clark with three, and then a trio of Crusaders with two. Those being James Hughes, along with uh, Perry Faden and Taylor Richards. After that, you only have one other guy scoring, and he's got one point. Right, and like I said, Great Lakes is really struggling to get the ball in the basket. And again, Forster's leading 41-15. Also want to remind you that you can follow the games on Twitter as well. For men's games, you can go to Twitter and follow at HU Hoops. And for the women's games, go to at HU underscore sports. And we want to give a special thanks to our social media correspondent, Victor McCarty, who's tweeting those out for us. I've got a Twitter myself. Don't do too, many, too much tweeting, though, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll, I'll favor it and I'll retweet, but uh, I'm not... I guess I wouldn't say I'm a creative tweeter right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Sometimes I can be, and most of them are inspired by my angry my anger at the Colts and how they're playing. But I really <laughs> but haven't, hey, had, they're doing well I haven't right had very many opportunities yeah. to do that this season. There you go. Damn. Also want to give some uh, a special good luck to our women's basketball team. They travel to Campbellsville, Kentucky to take on Campbellsville University tomorrow at 6 p.m. I want to give a shout-out to our Lady Forester basketball squad. They're now 1-1 one one after a victory earlier this week on the road at Holy Cross College, where Peja Speed put up a career-high 33 points. Love to see that kind of production out of anybody, especially some upperclassmen who are showing some leadership. And again, as both teams come out and start to shoot around before half number two, let's take a look at some of the keys now that the Foresters have to do. Caleb? We've seen the Foresters, 41 points in the first half. Could not be better. How do you avoid a letdown here? Well, honestly, you just want to keep doing what you're doing, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They're doing a great job. I've said it a thousand times with their defense today. Get, uh, you know, Great Lakes can't get any good shot opportunities. They're getting a lot of turnovers. If they keep doing what they're doing, they can relax on the offensive side of the ball and keep the control of the game in their favor. And again, they limited Great Lakes to only six made field goals on 20 attempts, two of those being threes. So obviously the two-pointers have not been uh, their specialty. They're going to have to try and shoot over this Forrester team, I believe. Right. And so you'll, you know that they're going to be trying to attack the basket a little bit more. But I think that if the Foresters can hold their defense, everything else will kind of fall into place. And, of course, if you're Great Lakes, how do you turn around after giving up 41 points in half number one? Do you just calm down, erase that out of your mind, and just keep going like it was a normal game? Well, I don't think you necessarily want to completely forget what happens, but you know they're going to be trying to start over, pretend like it's a new half, like it actually is, and hopefully they can... They're, they're not going to be able to slow down too much. I mean, you don't want to rush, but at the same time, they've got a big deficit to overcome. So I'm sure we'll see some fast-paced basketball, maybe some full-court press coming out of Great Lakes, and they'll see if they can try to turn this ball game around. Again, the winner of this game goes on to face the IU East Red Wolves in the championship game tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. And certainly right now it looks like the Foresters are going to be joining them in that game. Again, earlier, the Red Wolves beat Judson University 99-88, a very high-scoring affair. Right, and it was a very close game there toward the end when IU East was finally able to break away, but uh, that'll be a tough competition for whoever ends up coming away with a victory in this game. And again, the Foresters working off a of 52% from the field in that first half. Got to think that you can only keep the pedal down and not have a letdown here, at least in the first few minutes. Right. The most important thing for them to do is just keep doing what they're doing. Keep calling and play their fundamental game, which they do very well. Closing in on three minutes before we begin half number two, 41-15 your score here at the half. Forcers looking to advance to the championship of the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame tournament. We're back after this on Forcer Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM.
Back inside Platt Arena, the winner goes on to the Nest Brothers Hall of Fame Championship game against IU East. And right now, Caleb, it's looking like the Foresters will be doing that. 41-15 here as we're about ready to start half number two. HU's gotten themselves into a really good position. All they got to do is just play their game, and they'll walk away with a win with this one. In a, a great crowd here on hand. We've got fans up near the, the very top here inside Platt Arena. The fans have really stepped their game up this season. Makes it a more fun experience for everybody. Yeah. There's a lot of people here and a lot of people into the game, and that's what we've seen these last two home games. Forcers will start with Baster, Alt, Heinen, Merriman, and Short. Mm -hmm. Starting lineup on the floor for HU, and Great Lakes will start out with the basketball. It is Jones. Jones working around to Vickers. Out to Vaden. Around the perimeter again in the near corner. Now it is with number 11, Pride. Pride will take a mid-range jumper. Nothing but the backboard. Vickers the rebound. Dishes to Pride. Blocked by Merriman. But the putback is good by number 32, Taylor Richards. It's good. Good rebounding by Great Lakes. Got him a second and third chance to put some points on the board, and they were able to do that. Forsters break the full court pressure put on by the Crusaders as Heinen gives it off to Tyler Alt. Cross court to Baster. Now back to Heinen, top of the key. Bounce pass to Merriman. Now bounce pass to Short. Back to Merriman. Shot from the high post is Short. And the rebound, Vickers. Vickers now slows it down just a little bit as he works it to Vaden, top of the key. Vaden against Short. Goes all the way to the hole and lays it in with the left hand. It's a great shot. It wasn't like he wasn't contested. Short stayed on him well, but he was able to still find the hole. 41-19. A quick 4-0 run put together by the Crusaders. Heinen. Has the ball, left open, did not pull the trigger as Merriman now controls it. He'll go back out to Heinen. 2-3 zone still put on by the Crusaders. Bounce pass in the post to Short. Back outside, Alt for three, yes! Good patience by Huntington to not force any shots that weren't there. They had a couple of close opportunities, but they were able to hold out for a really good three-point opportunity by Alt. Under 18 and a half to play, Vaden in the paint. Picks up his dribble and dishes it back outside. It'll now be with Vickers out near the timeline. Baster content to give some space. Vickers will go over to Jones on the far wing, and Vaden almost lost it, but has it right back. Heinen defending, screen set, high off the backboard, but a foul there by Merriman, it looks like. See what the referee calls, and it will be against Shane. We're seeing Great Lakes start off with a little more aggressive offense. They're really trying to take the ball to the rack and get some points. That's Merriman's second foul. First team foul of the half for either side here. 18.06 to play, 44-19, pending these two free throws from Perry Vaden. Junior guard at 6-2 out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That one off the back iron and no good. Vaden with one more attempt from the charity stripe. Second one on the way. That one is good. And Great Lakes now cuts the deficit to 44-20. So we hit the 18-minute mark here in half number two. Heinen will work it to the junior baster. Now to Alt at the top of the key. Defended by Vaden. Three ball up and good for TJ Short. 47 to 20. Good start from the three point line by the Foresters. I believe right now two for two in this half. Going inside. Richards turnaround jumper off the glass and good. It was a great move. He was able to body up on Shane Merriman, which is not easy to do, and get a nice bank shot in. Here is Alt. Alt with a lot of space goes inside to Merriman. Back out to Alt. Swinging it around the perimeter, and now it is with Baster. Now to Heinen. Heinen goes in, down low to Short. Nice pass to Baster for three, yes! And we see another assist by TJ Short. He's finding those plays whenever they're available. And this is turning out to be a great asset for TJ Short. Yeah, he can shoot the three and the good mid-range jumper, but if he can continue to assist his teammates like this, he could be a complete ball player. Makes him very tough to defend as well. Maybe he'll pass, maybe he'll shoot, and he's very capable of doing both. Your score now, 50 to 22. Foul there it was a hand check against Derek Heinen. Second team foul of the half. Pride checks out. And coming on is 42, James Hughes. Vickers 
Works it at the top with Jones. Now back to Vaden. Vaden takes a dribble, puts up a quick two. No good. Nothing but air. Merriman the easy board against Richards. Double team on Heinen. Now Merriman goes down low to Short. Short puts up the shot. Looked like it was a block on top of the ball. It is a jump ball in that sense. And it will be Forrester basketball. There were a couple of hands in there, but it looks like they all were able to find the basketball. I think that's a good call by the refs. Nope. Alt inbounds quickly to Merriman. Now he hands it off back to Tyler. Tyler will drive. Tried to kick it out, but it was deflected and taken away by Great Lakes. And again, we've seen a step up in aggression from Great Lakes today. Inside, Vaden off the glass. No good. Rebound short. TJ works it up to Baster. Three on two for the Forcers. Alt for three. High off the glass. Yes, it found it. Excellent ball movement. They recognized that they had numbers on the fast break, and they were able to get the open man for the three-pointer. In the words of alumni Jamil Brenneman, ring the bell. Another three ball for the Forcers. 53-22. <laughs> Vickers. Top of the key defended by Baster. He'll work it to Jones. Jones in the corner to Richards. Richards, that one goes high over to Vickers. He'll catch and shoot for three. No good. Merriman the rebound. Here come the Forcers. Not content to just slow it down here. Here's Baster open for three. And it is good again. <laughs> well, the Foresters keep nailing these three-pointers. Eventually, Great Lakes is going to have to adjust and start stepping up their defense, especially around the perimeter. 56-22. The Foresters are just raining threes from beyond the arc. Hughes, a high arcing shot. No good. Tipped. Might have been short. Here he goes the other way. Count it and one. Well, you can't see play any better than that. I believe TJ Short got a tip to force the air ball. He was able to get the ball back, take it all the way down, and get an and one. Foul goes against 42 Hughes. And we have hit the media timeout. An unbelievable start for HU as we go to the timeout. 58-22 over the Great Lakes Christian Crusaders. You're listening and watching Forrester Basketball on Forrester Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Feuds FM. Back inside Platte Arena, 15-12 to play. And the Forsters have come out firing, 58-22. A 17-5 run, Caleb, here to start the second half. And, you know, we expected Great Lakes to come out swinging, and they really did. They've really stepped up their aggression here in the second half. But the Foresters have, in turn, stepped up theirs and started out with a great, first, the great start to the second half. You know, Caleb, I may be wrong, but all of these points so far have been three-pointers up to this point. And TJ Short has a chance to make it another three-point play. Unbelievable. Short puts it up. That one rattles in and out. No good. Rebound to Faden. He'll work it up to Hughes. Hughes very easily across the timeline. Works it over to Jones. Jones now to Vickers. Now in the post with Vaden. Vaden turns in, gives it to Richards, and a nice give and go to the glass. Yep, that was a very good dish by Vaden, able to find the open man in the paint. 58-24, under 15 minutes to go. And Derek Heinen will run the point. So far, no subs here for the Foresters, Cable. Well, why do you think that is? Well, they might be saving them for the rest of the game at this rate. Heinen working it around the perimeter. Oh, he, Baster tried an oop. A little too high for Shane Merriman, and he can't believe it. Well, sometimes when you have a big lead, you're, you're not afraid to try some crazy things. And he was going for some sort of alley-oop there, but it didn't quite work out. Also on that play, there was a foul against T.J. Short. 
Must have been away from the basketball. I did not see it. I did not either. Nonetheless, Crusaders have the ball back. As it's worked with Hughes, now to Jones, now Vickers. Vickers looks to go in on Baser, cannot. Works it back outside with Jones. Jones going against Alt. Tries to cross him over, but hands it off to Hughes. Back around. Richards on the low block against Merriman. Puts up a tough shot, no good. Merriman gets the board. Baser now slows it down, gives it to Heinen. Heinem, men at the top of the key by two Crusaders as the 2 3 zone defense. Kind of getting to the freshman Heinem there. Dish in the corner, Alt for three. Too strong. Ball knocked around, and Richards the rebound. Here is Vickers. He'll take it all the way to the hoop. No pressure, really, from TJ Short. Well, we saw Heinem there go for the steal on the fast break, and it wasn't successful, and he was able to uh, allow the Great Lakes player to take it all the way down and get the easy two. 58-26, 13.30 to go. Nice dish inside, Merriman! Flushes it with two hands! And another great feed by TJ Short. He is finding the open man every time, and that time allowing for a really impressive Shane Merriman dunk. And this crowd cannot be any happier after that. My goodness! Vickers, working the perimeter, lobs it into Richards. Richards now. Tries to put it up, does, no good. Tipped around, Heinen has it, and he'll, here we go. Three on one. Dishes it to Short, and he lays it in. TJ Short's all business right now. No big <laughs> style points, but he is making it happen. At the other way come the Crusaders. Vickers, a two ball put up, no good. Richards the rebound, puts it back up and off the glass. Looks like the Foresters are preparing a major substitution here. We have four guys about to check in. And I believe I just saw the first smile from Ty Platt there on the sideline. Usually Ty Platt's all business out there, but he's willing to have some fun right now. Merriman, a baseline jumper. A long one is good. 30-second timeout taken by Coach Platt. Nicely done there. It's now 64-28. And the Forester seemingly in this half cannot miss. <laughs> Well, we see a lot of the starters may be sitting down here, and at the rate this game's going, we might not see them again. Again, 64-28. The Foresters more than doubling the Crusaders at this point. And Shane Merriman got a nice high five and a smile from assistant coach Jamie Hodgkiss. I think he was pretty happy with that two-ended flush right there. Well, there's really very few complaints that the coaching staff can have with this Forester basketball team tonight. They're doing everything right, and they're really making Great Lakes pay for every mistake. The Foresters sub in Daniel Wall, Calvin Miller, Kyle Pippinger, and Drew Benedict. So all five players right now, a freshman squad. Well, you My wouldn't goodness. know it by looking at them. <laughs> Almost all of them have had big moments tonight. They and have. I'm sure we're about ready to see some more. Great Lakes Christian Ball inbound will go to Clark and now gives it right back to Vickers who will run the point. Also checking in for Great Lakes number 30, David Parts back on the floor. Looking to the right side is Pride, does not, kicks it back out. Parks alone for three and he hits it. Looks like a little bit of a defensive blunder there. I believe that was Daniel Wold didn't quite switch in time and it was able to leave Great possibly, Lakes out for an open three. Possibly didn't expect the big man Parks to go out that far and go ahead and shoot it. Here's the ball with Benedict. Works it to Miller. Now with Pippinger. Pippinger going against this 2-3 zone. Now Heinem will go cross court to Benedict. No look pass to Miller. Now back to Benedict. Forster's working at the free throw line with Wall. Heinem back out to Wall along two. That one is good. And the fans love Daniel Wall. Well, can you blame him? He's got a lot of friends out here in the stands, especially in the student section right now. 30-second timeout taken by Great Lakes Christian College. 66, 31, 11, 23 to play. Caleb, <laughs> I, I, don't, I really do not know what to say right now. The, even the bench is having success. No, there's, there's nothing really to say. If, if I'm Great Lakes coach, I'm trying desperately to try to change up something in the game plan to get some points on the board. Because right now, everything they've tried up to this point is not working. And of course, this is an NCCAA team. You don't expect too much competition, but still, 
when you're up by more than double the opponent's score, that that's incredible. It really is. It is. Everything's going right, and you can, there's a lot of happiness coming from the Forrester bench. <laughs> and a lot of happiness in that student section as well. Most of them still on their feet at this point. Crusader ball as Vickers works it to Pride. Pride defended by Miller. Trying to ball fake, works it out to Parks. Goes inside to Vaden, ball knocked loose, and that one out of bounds off of Vaden. Well, not a very smart pass. He tried to go high on the inside, but he overshot him just a little bit, and Heinen made him pay for it. Heinen will work it across to half court. Works it over to Miller. Thought about the shot. Going inside, Pippinger. Got it blocked away. It looks like the referee said he got the ball. Here come the Crusaders quickly back to the other way. Ball knocked loose by Wall. Almost takes it away. He was looking for his fourth steal of the night there. Pride. Throws it to no one in particular, but Crusaders corral it. Ball work now back outside. Vickers. Now they go inside. Vaden puts up a tough shot. Draws the foul. That will go against Heinem. Looks like he got him on the upper forearm or elbow. Fourth team foul the half and second against Heinem. Well, if we can say one positive about Great Lakes, they've been able to stay out of foul trouble. They only have one foul in this half with 10.39 left to go. And, and considering in half number one, they had 11 team fouls. This is definitely a good turnaround at this point. First free throw is good from Perry Vaden. Sub looks to come on, but he will do so after the free throw if it is made. Vaden puts up the second, and that one is good too. It is Richards checking back on. Vaden will head to the bench for a well-needed rest. Forsters will control it as Heinen goes ahead and gives it up to Benedict. Now back to Heinen. Benedict and Heinen going back and forth. Benedict will put up a three and hit it. There it is. We've been waiting for that all night. We know he's very capable of hitting that shot, and that time he didn't and, even think twice about it. And give the assist to Daniel Wall at the free throw line, giving him that dish. Here they go the other way. It looked like Miller got the steal. Here is Wall. Oh, oh he misses the dunk. Well, you got to love the tenacity in which he went in there, but he just couldn't quite get it in. Unfortunately rejected by the rim as Parks nails an outside three. And well, Wall kind of cooking himself there as he couldn't get back on defense. Right, definitely a little bit of a freshman mistake there, but when you're up by as much as these Foresters are, it's not very consequential. 69-36 now after the three ball. Pass back to Benedict, he'll put up another. He hit it! Right in the same spot, and it looked like he may have even been fouled there, but it went in regardless. 72-36. The Foresters have doubled the Crusaders to this point. Vickers gives it off to Clark. Now with Pride, good switch by Heinem. Pride puts up the shot, no good, another air ball. And the crowd getting into this one as it's worked to Miller. Miller back outside, Heinem thought about the three, goes cross court to Benedict. He'll take a three himself, short rebound Richards. Here come the Crusaders, Vickers looking to look in hot pursuit. Finds Pride in the corner. Ball knocked inside and stolen by Wall rather easily. Mark him for number four on the night. He's doing a great job taking advantage of any kind of offensive mistakes that Great Lakes has been making. Working it around the perimeter. Wall to Benedict to Heinen and straightaway three. Good. The Foresters are having a shoot around session right now. Cranking threes left and right and making most of them. 75 36. This one is well out of hand. 8.35 and counting to go in the second half. And here's the ball worked with Pride. Pride works it to Clark, defended by Benedict. Now Vickers has it. Looks like Kai Foday will check in on the next dead ball. Looks like Vickers may have pushed off against Pippinger there. And Richards with a nice pump fake got Wall up in the air and created the easy layup. So obviously, Caleb, again, the freshmen are prone to mistakes, but regardless, right. 75, 38 still. Pretty easy to overlook those mistakes when, one, you're up by so much, and, B, when he's made so many great plays throughout the course of the game. Ball worked with Miller. Now to Heinen on the baseline. Goes inside the wall. Too easy. We've seen some great teamwork tonight. Lots of great passes Indeed, finding the open yes. man. In fact, looking at that first half, 
We had nine assists on 14 made field goals from the Foresters. We could see another similar number here. Ball work to Pride. That one taken away by Heinen. Heinen puts it up. He went for the dunk, but he's fouled. And well, Pride is upset with himself there. Well, you could see it in his eyes right before he was about to go up that he really wanted that dunk. But <laughs> oh. pretty good heads-up play by Great Lakes to knock him down and give him the hard foul. Don't give him the chance and make him earn it from the charity stripe. Fourth foul going against Pride. And we've hit the second media timeout of the half. 7.27 to play. Uh, looks like the Foresters are rolling into the championship game of the Nuss Brothers Hall of Fame Classic, leading 77-38 here on Forster Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM. Back inside Platt Arena, two free throws coming for Derek Heinen as he was fouled by Keenan Pride. That was his fourth foul. Second team foul of the half for the Crusaders. In your score, 77-38. 727 to play in the second half. In Caleb, the winner of this game goes on to play IU East in the championship as Heinen misses the first free throw. Yeah, notwithstanding a major Forrester collapse, it looks like this one's going to be going to them. But there's still seven minutes regardless. Second free from Heinen is short. Rebound to Richards. And he'll work it up now to Jones. Jones goes to Lantonio Clark, or Latino Clark, excuse me. Nice jumper there made by Perry Vaden, number one. And that was one of the very few well-constructed well offensive plays there by Great Lakes. They were able to run a good play, find the open man, and get a nice jump shot. Again, Heinen running the point, 77-40. Seven minutes exactly to go in the game. Miller, shot fake, will move left. Goes back to Heinen, top of the key. Now it's with Benedict to Pippinger. Again, Kai Foday has checked in. He now works the ball to Heinen. Back to Pippinger. Foday sets the screen. Ball gets away from Pippinger, and it's out of bounds. And now Brody Crow will check in. Crow comes on for Derek Heinen. Good round of applause for him. May not be the point day that he was looking for, Caleb, but still, regardless, he's provided some good play out there. Well, and I think also he provides really good leadership, especially as he was out there among these younger players. And even though he's a young player himself, I think he shows he showed the poise of an upperclassman, and I think that's been very important to the Forrester team. Parks hits another three. I think that's his third one of the half. He's got to be closing in on double-digit scoring. 77-43, 6-15 counting. As Foday has it in the post, back outside to Miller. Miller gets a screen, puts up the jumper, and hits it. Great Calvin shot. Miller. I love to see those 10, 15 footers. I think it's kind of a lost start in basketball, and that was a great <laughs> shot. As Steve Berthume of uh, ESPN formerly said, it is a lost start, the mid-range jump shot. It truly is. 79-43, under six minutes to go. Clark works it to Jones. Jones defended here by Pippinger out near the timeline. He'll work it left, switched off by Crow. Back out, and that one easily stolen by Pippinger. Like Clark was trying to either hit Parks or Vaden and just could not find him. Brody Crow high off the glass with a little bit of contact. Hey, I'd say more than a little bit. It looked like his arm got swatted, but he was able to find the basket regardless. And Brody Crow came in with two points at the end of the first half. He just added another two points there. Ball inside, Vaden with a nice cut another against good, Crow. Another good opportunity there, taken advantage of by Great Lake. 81-45, closing in on the five minute mark, and now it'll be Drew Benedict running things. He's met by Clark, back out to Crow from Miller. Now Pippinger, Pippinger to Foday, 
And the Forster's working around the perimeter, just trying to waste some clock here. Bounce pass to Fode in the post. Fode lost it, had it knocked away by Parks, and it's taken by Jones. Jones, nicely done, working his way around Drew Benedict and, and lays it in. And Jones didn't have numbers there. He was one on two, but he was able to fake out both players and get a nice layup. And I think Benedict on that play may have set his uh, screen just a little too early there. Right. And Nonetheless, 81-47. Forster's working with a very comfortable lead. Here's Pippinger, fadeaway jumper, no good, too strong. Parks the rebound. Back the other way, quickly comes Jones. Jones works it into Clark. Reverse layup, blocked, I believe, by Crow. Parks another deep three. Too strong off the iron, and Crow jumping in the air, getting high for the rebound. Pippinger going to take it himself and lay it in. Going back to that defensive rebound by the Foresters, when there's three green jerseys and only one white one down there, it's pretty likely that the Huntington University Foresters are going to get that rebound. And on that play, Pippinger, he had three white jerseys around him. He still managed to get right to the basket. Here come the Crusaders. Couldn't be more impressed with these freshmen. Foul inside. Looks like that one will go against Fode, and it will. Looks like he got underneath of either Parks or Richards. That's Fode's first. Inbounder will be Jones. In their score, 83-47, 3.39 to go. Forcers will advance to the championship of the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame tournament. As the turnaround, no good by Vaden, gets his own board and misses the layup, and Fode snags the board. Nothing going right for Great Lakes on the offensive side of the ball. Miller will work it back out. Crow straight away for three. In and out, no good. Miller tried the rebound, but in the act, he commits the foul. Great Lakes seems to almost have checked out of this game mentally. We've seen a lot of Foresters wide open for shots. It seems like they are just completely demoralized. First foul against Miller. Jones takes his time before picking up the ball and the clock starts. 3.15 to play. And a timeout taken by Great Lakes Christian. See what the length is. And it is going to be a full timeout, so we'll take a break here. 83-47, Huntington leads Great Lakes Christian College. And the Forsters look to move on to the championship of the Ness Brothers Tournament. We're back after this on Forster Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM. Back inside Platt Arena, 83-47. Foresters with the lead over the Great Lakes Christian College Crusaders. And a massive substitutions now looking to come in. Looks like we'll see Hughes along with number 44, Turner. Number 24, Shelton. And we'll see Pride check back into the game as well. That will come in on the next dead ball. As Jones works the, over to Clark, and now it's with Vaden. Vaden going up against Crow, misses the shot, and Pippinger gets the rebound. Now Pippinger will take it up. This is off to Miller, look to go inside, but goes back to Crow, and now Benedict. Pippinger with it near wing, bounce pass to Fode, near the baseline, double team, lost the ball, and, and it goes the other way, Parks. He almost lost it himself, but does get it to Jones. Jones working top of the key, now backs it out. Works it to Clark. Clark dishes to Parks. Now off to Jones. And, and what do we have here? Looks like Perry Vaden was looking for a foul there, but he didn't get it. And they're going to go ahead and sub in without a timeout being taken with 18 on the shot clock. I don't think I've seen this before. 
sub while the play was still going on. And Great Lakes will go in with, again, you have Pride out there along with Shelton, Hughes, and Turner. The only one staying out there is number five, Latino Clark. Foul here against Pippinger on the wrist. That'll send a Crusader to the line. That is Hughes for the one and one. And Caleb, the Foresters looking to go against the Red Wolves of IU Southeast here in the champ, or IU East, I should say. And they're in the championship game of this Ness Brothers Hall of Fame Classic. Yeah. Right, and that's going to be a great game played at 3 o'clock tomorrow. We'll definitely be looking forward to watching that. Second free throw, no good from Hughes. Did hit the first one, and Fode got the rebound. Here comes Pippinger quickly up to Miller underneath. Can't finish. And a foul going the other way will go against Miller. Well, I know Huntington had a good opportunity there and an open man down in the paint, but I think at this point in the game, you just want to kind of drain the clock and, and put this one in the books. 2.19 to go in the second half. It's 83-48. That sends Hughes back to the line, and again, that was Miller's second foul of the game, eighth for the half. Two more fouls, and the Forsters will be in the double bonus. Free throw, a high arcing one is no good. Pippinger the rebound. Now he's going to try and run a little bit of the point. Gives it off to Benedict. Now he works it to Crow. Crow, what a crossover, and then dishes it off to Miller. Miller to Benedict, top of the key. Now to Crow. Brody goes to the free throw line. Fode, a long range jumper. In and out, no good. That one was about halfway down there, Caleb. Just could not fall. Right, and Pippitcher even got a finger on it, but he, they weren't able to come away with the offensive rebound in that situation. Hughes turning away, misses the jumper. That's not the first air ball we've seen tonight from Great Lakes. Unfortunately, it's not. Very much struggling from the field. Went out of bounds before Great Lakes could recover the ball. So gives it back to the Forsters as Benedict runs the point, crosses the timeline. He'll be defended by Shelton. Benedict backs it out to Fode. Bounce pass off to Crow. Back to Benedict. Now to Pippinger. Pippinger, the head fake. Spin move in the lane, puts it up. Halfway down again and can't finish. Here come the Crusaders. It is Pride working the ball. Now it looks like he'll want to run the point himself, but he picked up his dribble. Almost over the back on Clark. It's very Luckily high he stayed there. inside. Pass goes off to Shelton. Shelton with some interesting socks there. <laughs> Only one, really, with long socks and uh, pretty nice ones. Though. With a little bit of pink in there, yeah. too. This one knocked loose, stolen by Crow as he was on the ground. Benedict double team finds Fode. And bounce pass back out to Benedict. Forster's looking to just run out the clock here. Under 40 seconds to go, and the Foresters will be in your championship game tomorrow against IU East. Fode, nice use of the body, and he gets rewarded. A great fake move. He took his man left and then turned right around to the right for an easy shot. Shot clock turned off, and we're under 30. 85-48, the Foresters looking strong again. Ball worked, and that one knocked loose by Crow. Covered by Clark in the backcourt, but that is okay since Crow got a hand on it. Clark looks to take it himself. That one high over the backboard, but it looked like it may have been touched by either Crow or Miller before it went over, and it stays with Great Lakes. 11.1 to go on the clock. We really look to see Great Lakes just run the clock out here. Here's the inbound by Hughes to Shelton. Works it to Turner. Shelton will take a three, and he hits it. Well, it's got to be in the socks, right? <laughs> if anything else, at least we can say they ended on a good note. Crow holds on to the inbound, and that's the ball game. 85-51, the Foresters with a huge win. And again, as we've mentioned before, they will go on to play the IU East Red Wolves in the championship of this Nest Brothers Hall of Fame Classic. Well, you and I always like to see a close game, but sometimes it's really nice when you can see your home team come out and really crush their opponent, and that's exactly what happened tonight. 
We'll be back after this break with some post-game stats for you and possibly an interview with head coach Ty Platt after this big win, 85-51. The Foresters will meet the Red Wolves tomorrow at 3 p.m. We're back after this on Forrester Sports Live on YouTube and 105.5 Fuse FM. person on our roster playing at least 10 minutes. Back inside Platt Arena, Huntington University Foresters moving on to the championship game against IU East and the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame Classic. And right now we're here with head coach Ty Platt and coach, a very well-balanced effort out of your guys today. Just talk about how you, after you came out, starting off very well in the first half, what did it feel like from there? Well, I mean, you know, Great Lakes Christian is, is – uh, you got kids on their team that play hard. They're solid kids. Their coach is a very, very good guy, and he works hard with them. Um, but at, at the end of the day, we know that they're nowhere close to the kind of a talent or the kind of team that we're going to see in the Crossroads League. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite frankly, more importantly, uh, right now, the team we're going to see tomorrow in, in IU East. Mm -hmm. um, IU East is a team that's been to Branson, and uh, they've got tough, physical kids that are hard-nosed and and so we've got to really come to get after it tomorrow but I'll talk I'll finish talking about today <clears throat> it's always good to get everybody in it's always good to get people shots it's always good to to win so I mean I don't want to take any of that away mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it still goes down as a, a, on the left hand side of the column but uh, you know we just got to come out with a real focus about us tomorrow because it's a whole different story Again, looking at your guys, again, very balanced. Everybody getting at least 10 minutes out yep. there on the floor. Uh, yep. and, and really a lot of great production out of your young freshmen off yep. the bench. It's particularly, I would say, Daniel Wall really impressed me. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest. You know, the chemistry of our team is very good right now. And again, they haven't been battle tested to the point where it's, it's uh, you know, going to come to a head on that, mm -hmm. you know, like it's going to in the conference season. But 
our young guys get along real well. They uh, they're looking for each other with our older guys. Our mm -hmm. older guys have, are it's it's not like a typical situation where some teams deal with older guys. That, hey, I don't want these young bucks to come in and 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 take my time or take away my stats. It's all about family. I mean, you know, that's what they say in the locker room when they break away every time. That's what our philosophy's been this year. A couple things. One is no excuses and then um, the family. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so they're buying into that. It's easy to buy into that, though, when you win. Yeah. It's easy to buy into that when everybody gets to play and everybody gets shots and you have that kind of balance. But what we need to do is, is take the next step forward. And tomorrow's game is going to provide us with that next step forward, I really believe. And, you know, win or lose, we've just got to got to utilize that game tomorrow and get better. And again, uh, what do you have to say about these fans coming out here today? Well, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, and, and it, this is my sixth year. Uh, this is the best student support that we've had. And, and it's, yeah, we've only had two home games. But uh, it, it's been phenomenal. You know, even the, re, the some of the kids were on mm -hmm. campus today for admissions were here. Uh, let's bring them back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they can all be admitted today because of their <laughs> enthusiasm. But, you know, this the campus is getting into it. Th these are good guys. You know, the, the team is made up of quality individuals and, and guys that, that also enjoy the other kids on campus. Mm -hmm. And we want them to enjoy us. And we want this to be that big family. Love to see our president down there in the front row yeah. doing cheers and, and yelling and screaming. And <laughs> that's, uh, that's unique. You don't have that a lot yeah. of places. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, she can get crazy, and, <laughs> and that's great. Um, but the students, I really appreciate them, and I hope they know that. I hope that it's conveyed in, in some way to them how much we do, and we need them tomorrow, but we really need them then the rest of the season too. And Coach, congratulations on the win today, and good luck tomorrow against IU East 3 p.m. in the uh, championship of the Ness Brothers Hall of Fame Classic. Right. Great win. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your work. Thanks. And that's head coach Ty Platt, a, a, a very content coach Ty Platt, and, but he knows what's up ahead. He's content but not complacent. <laughs> exactly. and he's already looking ahead, and he, yeah. and he knows that the competition will get a little bit tougher, and he seems to be ready for it. <laughs> and, and, man, the Forsters, yeah. Again, the competition, not what it could be, but when this team clicks, I think.